Hey everyone, welcome to Cross the Ditch and See. My name is Laura and I'm so glad you're here today. I wanted to hop on and do a quick video on transplanting tomatoes. Um, tomatoes grow well in pots. They also grow well in the ground. Where I live, my soil is super sandy, so I grow all my tomatoes in pots. So I'm gonna show you how to do that and how to um, trellis your tomatoes as they grow. Like I said, we are going to talk tomatoes today and this little guy needs to be staked up but it is starting to rain so we're definitely going to make this a very very quick video so um i have a lot of tomatoes that i started in my house and we are going to put them into pots and i use five gallon planter pots or five gallon nursery pots to plant my tomatoes in and i just use a standard potting soil um, whatever potting soil you can afford just use it it don't it doesn't matter if it's organic or inorganic um, just use what you can because I want everyone to garden all right so here I have my tomato planted and I'm going to show you how I planted this tomato in this pot in order to get the most um, root structure I possibly could so I have a five gallon nursery pot like I mentioned here I have pot and soil in it about three quarters of the way up I have my great big old tomato plant here and I will show you how I'm going to prune this prior to planting all right so here we have my tomato that I call my compost tomato because it grew in my compost bin last year and I isolated some of the blossoms and saved some seeds from it, which I'll share about that in future videos. However, I want to pot this tomato into my nursery pots so it can continue to grow. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna prune these lower branches and these suckers off, just like you've seen me do in the past with up potting. So I'm gonna take my label out and I'm just going to pinch these little branches off the side just like so. And if they're a little bit too thick to pinch without causing damage to the stem, which means like making the stem peel down, you can use a pair of scissors or um, some pruning, some uh, like pruning shears. But I just take my fingernail, break it off, and there we go. I'm probably gonna do this one as well because it's about halfway up the stem, just like so. So the bottom half is branch free and the top half has several branches. I have a little bit of sun scald on my plant. You can see it right here from where I tried to harden them off a little bit too fast, but that's okay. The plant will grow through that. But here I have my tomato plant pruned and ready to go into the pot. Okay, so here, once again, I have my five gallon pot of soil. Like I said, just standard pot and soil, nothing fancy. Use whatever you have, use whatever you can afford, just get out there and plant. And what I'm doing is I'm just kind of burrowing a hole into the middle of my pot the best I can. And I'm gonna burrow it down as far as I can go. And then I'm gonna take my tomato plant here that we just pruned these lower branches off of and I'm going to pull it out of my solo cup. Check out the beautiful root structure. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna set this plant into this pot and I'm going to bury it about halfway up my stem. If you remember from my videos where I up potted tomatoes um, in the past, I was telling you that the little fibers, you see like little hairs growing off the stem of a tomato plant, can um, they turn into roots if they are buried into the dirt. And the stronger the root structure for your plant, the stronger the plant you have. So we want to encourage significant root growth. So right now I am going to bury my plant. Okay, so burying my tomato into my nursery pot, like I said, halfway up to the stem. Just gonna dig down and set it in there. And then I'm just gonna fill the dirt in around it, like so. You can see that. And then I'm just gonna take some extra pot and soil and I'm going to fill my um, nursery pot up to just below the bottom of this pot. So you can see where I'm pointing to. There's little ridges right here. 
I'm going to fill my potting soil up to this bottom ridge just so we bury as much of that stem as we can in dirt. It looks a little high, I've got a little higher than I mentioned, but that is because when I go to water this in, some of that dirt is going to sink down and it'll be at that level that I mentioned. So there we go. You have successfully transplanted your tomato plant and I'm gonna water this in really good and then I'm gonna show you how to trellis it. Okay, so we have our tomato plant planted in our nursery pot and as you can see this guy is getting so big that he is starting to droop over so I want to stake or trellis this up so it'll grow a big strong stem um, and continue growing vertical that way I can hopefully have me some tomatoes before too long so there's a couple of different ways you can stake it up one thing that I do is I have a fencing panel that goes down the side of my house and just as these guys grow I just loosely take a piece of twine and just gently like loosely loop it around the stem and then tie it to the fencing panel that way it keeps it upright and I continue to do that as it grows that's one option but if you're growing on say your patio or your sidewalk or on your steps you don't have the ability to do a fencing panel you have other options to um, stake your tomato plant up one thing is just simply sticking a post into the dirt and loosely tying your tomato plant to it that is one option another option is using bamboo sticks to create like a teepee around it so you would just stick your bamboo sticks into the dirt and i put it right against the edge of the pot and you just want to form like a triangle shape trying to stick my thicker ends of the bamboo stick into the pot the best I can. Get as deep as I can. And then we're going to bring them together at the top, which I will show you here in just a second. So after you stick the bamboo sticks into the pot, kind of in a little bit of a triangle form, you want to just bring your tops together. And it is no fancy way to do it. Just bring your tops together and you're gonna take string and I just create a little bit of a knot to hold the string up there initially. Kind of looping it around a couple of times. And then I'll take the rest of my string and just kind of twist it around the top of my sticks a few times kind of um, intertwining it through each of the sticks so it's kind of like braiding it through just to hold them together a little bit better and bring it up and once you do that a few times and you feel like it's pretty secure tied off then you can cut off any excess strings you have. All right, so now that we have our bamboo sticks tied at the top, we actually need to finish staking up our tomato plant because obviously just the sticks here in the soil is not gonna hold it up. So all we have to do is, I'm gonna bring you a little bit closer for this so you'll be able to see. You guys are sitting on a stack of flower pots actually. <laughs> There we go. So right here we have our tomato plant and I'm just going to make sure he is right here in the middle of my sticks and I'm going to take my string and I'm going to turn this around so you can see it a little bit easier but I'm going to come just below the top of the plant right here on this and I'm going to tie off my string. 
and loop it around a couple times just to make sure it's nice and secure. Like so. And then what I'll do is I'll go around to each stick and I'll take my string and I will just twist it around the stick and I'm gonna do it a couple of times and I'm gonna pull it kind of tight that way the string stays pretty firm and I'm gonna do the same thing going all the way around my plant and I'm gonna lift my branches up over or at least the ones that are tall enough up over my string that way it'll start to support the plant so if I do my string like this, it's gonna pull my branch in. So I'm just gonna lift the branch up over my string. And then here, I'll come back, pull it, put it in line with this first one and kind of loop it around a few times just to kind of braid it in there. And then we will tie it off. And then we'll just trim the excess string. You can use twine or jute whatever you have laying around. So we have started to trellis our tomato using strings with the little triangular method in this way. And then as the tomato plant grows taller, you'll just do it, I'd say maybe every six to eight, six to eight inches, do this again. That way as it grows, it'll just keep um, the plant upright. You can also use this method if you're growing like cucumbers in pots. Um, you can use the same method to help trellis the cucumber and give the cucumber vine little um, strings for its trundles to grab hold of so it'll climb it up as well. But here is one way to stake up your tomato plant so you can grow in a container because you don't have to live in the country. And like I keep saying, you don't have to have a bunch of land to grow food for you and your family. All you need is some dirt, some water, some sunshine, and some seed or a seedling and a pot like this, which does not cost much at all. And you can grow food for you and your family. A single tomato plant puts off a lot of tomatoes. People will be surprised how many tomatoes you get. I grow about 30 plants and we have enough tomatoes to feed my family of four to share with our neighbors and then I freeze my tomatoes so I can make like pasta sauce and stuff during the winter time. So definitely, definitely get tomatoes. Great way to produce a lot of food in a very little space. Another method you can use to stake your tomatoes up like this is using the same style nursery pot, but using like hard wire fencing, you can buy a roll of this at hardware stores, at Lowe's, Trash Supply. Um, I think I got a 75 foot roll for like, oh gosh, I think it was like 30 or 40 bucks. And this is using maybe a two foot section of it, if even that, maybe more like 18 inches. But um, you cut off enough of the fencing to make a half of a circle, and then you put it into an empty nursery pot, a flower pot, whatever you're using. You can also put it in the ground in your garden. Some people will take like a bamboo stake or a T-post and drive it into the ground behind the pot and um, just to further stabilize it in case there's like some um, strong winds or something that comes through and they'll um, attach the uh, wire fencing to that stake that's in the ground just to give it more stability. But here, I'm just gonna show you how to assemble this method of trellising or staking up your tomato plant. Once again, you can use this for cucumbers as well and um, plants that grow smaller melons like cantaloupe, honeydew, things like that. But like I said, I cut off enough of the fencing to create a half circle into my nursery pot. It's actually a little bit more than half circle. I will say, do not leave the excess fencing um, hanging like this because these are sharp tips right here. Cut it clean like I did 
on this side. At least it's fairly clean. I got as close as I possibly could. And if you want to go a step further, you could grind those little notches off. But I left this here just for demonstration purposes. But make sure you cut this part off. Cut this part of your fencing off. Don't leave it stuck out this way because you don't want to get poked by that when harvesting your tomatoes. But once you cut your fencing, you can put it inside of the pot. I just slid it in on the inside of my pot. Kind of holds itself in there. Then we're going to fill the pot and plant our tomato. And that's really all you have to do. Then as your tomato grows, you can just tie it to the fencing panel. So just like we did earlier, I have, I mentioned we have our fencing in here. And I'll go cut these off here in just a minute. It's starting to rain again, so I don't want to get have to go for a quick run like I did earlier but we're just going to put our dirt in here and it filled a little over halfway up get my tomato I'm going to prune this tomato just like I did my others. So I'm gonna take these bottom branches and just gently break them off. I'm gonna do these two like so. That way we have a nice stalk to berry. Then I'm gonna pull my tomato plant out. I always love the roots. Then we're just gonna come in here, dig us a hole bury our tomato and then we'll fill in around it with dirt I always make a mess is there such thing as a clean gardener I have no idea I am not very tidy if you looked under my carport right now it is full of potting soil but we're gonna do just like we did our other tomato plant we're gonna bury the stem and we're gonna fill it just about to the top of our pot and water it in really well so Staking or tying up the tomato that's growing in this half circle fencing um, uses the same concept as it would if I were tying it to the fencing down the side of my house. Just as it starts to grow and get a little bit taller, I'm just going to take a little piece of my string and I'm just going to very loosely bring it around my tomato plant. I'm not going to pull it tight. I'm just going to go very loosely around it. And then I'm just going to tie it to the fencing itself. Ouch. I'm going to have to go make sure I cut these little pieces off. And we're going to make sure we tie up the center stalk. That way it'll create good upward growth. A good strong stalk. There we go. So I'll just continue to do that as it grows. I might actually break this branch off just so we can get good fluid movement or good fluid growth upwards. So I'm actually gonna probably, there we go. And this guy needs some water. So I'm gonna get it some more water here in just a minute. But that is another way to create um, a trellising system or a way to stake up your tomatoes in a pot. That, my friends, is why you want to cut those extra pieces off of your fencing because if you don't, you'll end up cutting yourself. So, whew, this is a heavy tomato. I'm gonna have to set you guys down. Ooh, there we go. All right, it's heavy because I watered it. Um, so I'm taking my tomato down to the side of my house to just show you what I was talking about with the fence going down the side of my house. So here, check that out. My potatoes are growing quite well. Ignore the grass growing up in here. I've got to get in here and pull it. 
but I'm going to come right here, try not to fall over the fence, and just show you what I'm talking about. So, during the summertime, I have tomatoes going down the side of my house where I have some T-post driven into the ground and chicken wire zip tied to it, like legit. You don't have to buy fancy metal ties. You can use zip ties if you want to. But I have my tomatoes lined up in their nursery pots down the side of the house at the base of the fence. And as they begin to grow, this guy is not quite tall enough yet, but as they begin to grow, I just take a little piece of string. You can actually see some that I left attached from last year for some reason. But I'll just take a little piece of string, tie it to that center stalk, like I mentioned earlier, just a very loose little loop like you see here, just around the stalk like you saw me do a while ago. And then I'll come up and I'll tie it to the chicken wire and I'll continue doing that every, I don't know, six inches to a foot, depending upon how heavy the tomato plant is getting. And just keep doing that as it grows up the fence panel here to give the tomato plenty of support. This also helps with airflow and will help to reduce um, disease and stuff in the plants, particularly when it starts getting really hot and humid, which where I'm at in Eastern North Carolina, it gets really hot and humid fast. I mean, it's April and it's already hot and humid out here, but um, it'll help provide airflow. So on those hot and humid days, you have less chance of um, disease and stuff forming within your plants. Once again, you can do this with cucumbers, tomatoes, and um, plants that have like small melons growing on them. One other tip when it comes to growing tomatoes in containers or no matter where you're growing your tomatoes, even if it's in, in a, a tilting garden, um, when you water your tomatoes, do not water them overhead because getting the leaves of tomatoes wet can encourage uh, disease to form. So the best way to water tomatoes, really any vegetable, is water at the level or water at the soil. Don't spray over top, don't get the leaves wet, just water the, so the soil or the dirt itself. So once you get your tomatoes planted and get a structure put in place for trellising them, then it is time to just keep them watered, make sure they're getting plenty of sunshine. And after a few weeks, because you do have them in nursery pots, they'll use up their nutrients in the soil pretty quickly. So you will need to um, uh, give them some like water soluble fertilizer after a few weeks in that pot. And maybe every few weeks or so throughout the gardening season. I think last year, sorry, it's hot and humid as I mentioned earlier. <laughs> um, I think last year I fertilized mine about once a month with just lightly with some water soluble fertilizer to keep the nutrients going in them and they did really well. So just keep that in mind and before long you will have a huge tomato plant and lots of little tomatoes growing on it. So I hope you will go out and plant you some. There are so many varieties of tomatoes out there. I encourage you to try something different, something that you haven't tried before. Before I did that last year, I tried several different new types of tomatoes and oh my goodness, fell in love with every one of them. So I have a few more that I'm trying this year and I'll be excited to share those with you as we go through the, uh, the, the growing process with them. So if you don't wanna worry about having to stake tomatoes up to keep them from flopping over, um, there are container varieties out there that do really good growing in flower pots. Um, they'll probably have the word container or patio within their name or on the packaging. I actually picked one up at Tractor Supply a few weeks ago and it is a patio hybrid tomato. It is a determinate tomato. And within the videos that you watch on YouTube or on some of the plant labels that you may see, in the stores, um, you'll see the words determinate and indeterminate. And they simply mean how the tomato grows. Um, 
it and that goes for like potatoes too they you have determinate and indeterminate uh, types. So a determinant tomato, which is what this patio hybrid is, only grows to a certain size. That that tomato will only grow to be a certain size. It will only put off so many blossoms and it will only grow a predetermined set of tomatoes. An indeterminate does not. An indeterminate will grow and grow and grow until either disease or um, frost kills it. If you keep your tomatoes where it has plenty of airflow, keep them fed good, um, and take good care of them, if you have indeterminate varieties, your tomatoes will grow until you dig them up or until they get killed by frost. Usually we have tomatoes right up until like October, November every year, and it's super awesome. But I wanted to show you my little patio hybrid here. And as you can see, it already has little tomatoes growing on it. So we'll be eating those before too long. And this plant won't get much bigger than this container right here. It's in a two gallon pot. Um, I have some container reds. I think that is the name for it. I can't remember, but it's a container red from Haas Tools that I have um, started from seed and several people have stopped by and picked up to have at their homes. But I'm gonna be transplanting some of those into a pot as well soon. And they are made to be grown in a pot as well and not so much in the garden. So they'll stay a compact size because they are a determinate variety tomato. So just kind of something to keep in mind when you are buying tomatoes. These that I planted right here and staked up in the video earlier, they are indeterminate varieties. So they will continue to grow until disease kills them, I kill them, or the frost kills them. So um, just something to keep in mind. A little fun fact, if you didn't know, that's something that I didn't know up until about a year ago. I didn't know the difference. So just wanted to share that tidbit with you. Well, that is it for this video. Um, just wanted to show you how to transplant tomatoes out into pots and how to trellis them or stake them up so they will continue growing upright and have plenty of airflow, airflow and produce plenty of tomatoes for you. You can use the same method if you're planting in ground as well in your garden. You can do the half fence panel. You can do a full fence panel. You can do the, um, the, the, <laughs> staking them up with bamboo oh it's been a long day y'all um staking them up with bamboo there's several other other methods there's a weave method that you can use to stake them up if you're growing them in the garden as well so um just get out there get the planting it's not too late to start tomato seeds and if you just don't want to you know put around with tomato seeds and growing that way find your local nursery find someone who grows tomatoes locally, see if you can get some tomato plants from them that they may have started and get to growing, get some fresh tomatoes because I promise you, if you've never had a truly fresh tomato, and I don't mean a fresh tomato from the grocery store because they're not super fresh. I mean, walk outside, pick a tomato off the vine and eat it fresh. The taste, you, you just can't compare the taste to any other tomato. It is so good. So I encourage you, get out there, get to planting. The weather is warming up. It is my favorite time of year. New beginnings, new starts, and new gardens. I'm so excited. So get out there and plant. And if you decide to plant some tomatoes, keep me posted on your progress. Let me know what varieties you have tried. And because I'm always looking to try new varieties and I love hearing other people what they try and what they like. So let me know what you're planting this year as well. Thank you so much for joining me. I hope you have a blessed day. I hope you come back to see me again.